Is Enphase stock showing signs of a bottom and is the worst for the business now behind them? We'll look to answer that question and a whole lot more in today's video. Hey guys, hope you're doing well out there. Time to take a look at shares of Enphase Energy, ticker symbol ENPH. They just reported their Q4 results. Shares are higher nearly 11.5%. That is despite a miss on both the top and bottom line. We'll get into their Q4 results. We'll also take a look at their first quarter guidance for the current Q1 that we are in. We'll take a look at the valuation and really where growth is expected to stall out over at Enphase. We'll jump into the financials as always and then take a look at it from a stock chart perspective. This one really has been in a pretty steep downtrend since you can call it January of 2023. So over the past year. But again, like we said, has this one bottomed in October and November? And is it clear skies for Enphase moving forward? As always, if you are new to the channel and find this type of content valuable, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. Shares of Enphase Energy trading at roughly $100 flat on the day, but in the after hours, like you see this one up close to 11.5%, now trading up all the way to $112. And that is pairing some of those one-year losses of nearly 55%. As we walk through today's results, keep in mind this one has a market cap still north of $13 billion. So as the revenues over at Enphase continue to decline, the market cap starts looking just a bit bigger. Now, Q4 revenue is coming in at $302 million. That was a decline of roughly 58% year over year. That also missed expectations on Wall Street by roughly $25 million. Wall Street expectations were closer to $328 million. Wall Street was expecting a decline of 54%. Enphase coming in with a decline of 58% in their Q3. Before their Q4, they had guided for roughly revenues to come in the range of 300 to 350 million. And so Enphase coming in right at the lower end of that. Not a great sign for investors considering that Enphase already is seeing a large decline on their revenues. They're coming in near the lower end of that. Q4 non-gap EPS coming in at 54 cents. That was just a small miss of one cent compared to Wall Street estimates, which were closer to 55 cents. That was still a decline of roughly 63% year over year. And so needless to say, Enphase really going through a tough time in their business. Keep in mind, these are also non-GAAP results. And what non-GAAP results do is they get to add back stock-based compensation. And when we take a look at Enphase's cash flows, you'll see this company has a significant amount of stock-based compensation. Now, before we get into the financials for Q4, let's take a look ahead on their Q1 guidance. So Enphase expects revenue to come in between 260 to 300 million. The estimate for Wall Street was at 315 million. So not only did they come in with top line miss and a bottom line miss? They also came in with a miss on those Q1 revenue guidance. And so really this was a triple miss over at Enphase. But with the stock up 11.5%, you really get to see that expectations for this quarter over at Enphase were really at the floor. And even despite this triple miss, even despite lowering Q1 outlook, yeah, shares are still being rewarded. And with Wall Street estimates closer to $315 million, at least on that revenue side, that would have represented roughly 56% decline year over year on those Q1 revenues. With Enphase saying they're expected to come in at 260 to 300 million, take a 280 million midpoint for this number. That would be revenue declines of roughly somewhere in the range of 60 to 70% year over year. That is absolutely terrible to see. And the fact that this business will continue to see further declines in their revenues. The fact that revenue declining is looking to accelerate, that just shows that the business over at Enphase has certainly not bottomed yet. The stock is a different case, but the business is looking to deteriorate in this Q1. Now, they're also expecting gas gross margins to come in the range of 42 to 45%. To put that into perspective, in this most recent Q4, we had gap gross margins coming in at 48.5%. So, Again, on top of revenue declines, they're expecting those gross margins to also continue to trend lower. And then the other thing is operating expenses. This is where Enphase can really just look to control costs. This is a very cyclical business and a very cyclical industry, to be fair. And the fact that they can't really have a whole lot of control on the way their revenues go, at least Enphase can look to control how they manage operating expenses. And in, for this upcoming Q1, Enphase expects to spend roughly 144 to 148 million dollars in terms of operating expenses in this most recent quarter it came in at 156 so they are looking to control those operating expenses sequentially and year over year and that is really all Enphase can do is just look to control costs and so this most recent quarter not looking all too good over at Enphase and then this upcoming Q1 also looking to be pretty rough as they guided under the estimates on Wall Street. And as we look ahead over 2024, 
Really, EPS is expected to decline 9%. I think this number will come in lower, likely declining somewhere between 10 to 15%, considering that revised guidance. And then this company is magically expected to ramp back earnings and revenues heading in 2025 and further on. Really, this business is highly dependent on those interest rates. And if the Fed looks to keep interest rates higher for longer, this number might not get realized in 2025, or at least not as early on in 2025 as the market is anticipating right now. Now, before we move on to the financials, this company does have a buyback of roughly a billion dollars in place and looks like they executed roughly a hundred million dollars of that for an average price of $84.51. And considering the shares are at roughly $112 in the after hours, looks like that was a good buy over at Enphase. They have also done share repurchases in the past as the stock was heading lower. They have bought at higher levels as well. And so the buyback this company has should look to provide some support for the stock. They com this company also announced a bunch of new deliveries in this most recent quarter, delivering their micro inverters really across many different countries. And then what they also announced was the fact that they're looking to streamline manufacturing and then they're ceasing operations at two of their manufacturing locations in Romania and Wisconsin. And right now they're looking to keep their South Carolina and Texas manufacturing facilities online and are looking to ramp up production on those. And they also expect to have just those two plants to come in with a capacity of roughly 7.25 million microinverters per quarter. To put that in perspective, in this most recent Q4, they shipped out just 900,000 microinverters. And so if Enphase is really looking to get up to 7.25 million micro inverter units per quarter if Enphase can execute and really make this come to fruition this company has a ton of upside if they're really seeing deliveries can go from 900,000 up to 7.25 million units per quarter that is a substantial ramp and if Enphase can execute on that this stock has a tremendous potential for upside now in terms of statement of operations we have the left hand column which is our most recent Q4 we have the Q4 Q3 pardon me in the middle column and then we have a year ago q4 of 2022 on the right hand side and so you compare it year over year that is down roughly 400 million dollars that is revenue and then even quarter over quarter down roughly 250 million dollars so pretty substantial declines on those revenues the cost of those revenues also coming down just the fact that they're not having to manufacture as many of those micro inverters yeah your cost of revenues will also subsequently come down and so gross profit in this most recent quarter coming in at 146 million last year you were closer to 310 million so that gross profit has basically been chopped in half from an operating perspective this company is looking to at least control cost as best as they can you see r&d not really taking up on a quarter over quarter basis but year over year is up roughly we'll call it 10 percent and then sales and marketing coming up to 53 million last year you were at 65 million and so that sales and marketing over at Enphase coming down and then GNA also taking down right around 10%. And so total operating expenses coming in at 156 million for this most recent Q4. Last year, you were roughly flat at 153 million. So operating expenses not really budging, but you had your gross profits roughly cut in half. And so what that'll do is we come all the way down to net income. And this company printed just $20.9 million worth of net income last year. They were sitting at roughly $153.7 million worth of net income in one quarter. And so from an EPS, from a net income, this story has really been turned ugly. And it's just mainly due to the fact that interest rates have been high for so long. These microinverters certainly aren't cheap. And people looking to install solar panels will, yeah, look to kind of push that aside while interest rates remain so high. Solar panels are a big ticket item that you usually finance. It's fairly obvious that their customers both in Europe and the US are looking to hold off on those solar panel installations as they've been sliced and diced by inflation. Now shares outstanding have been declining. You see in this most recent quarter diluted shares coming in at 139 million. Last year we were closer to 146 million. So this company executing on that buyback, I'm not sure how much they have left on that buyback, but considering the fact that it was announced last July, they probably still have a fair amount left on that buyback and so you can expect the share count over at Enphase to continue to at least tick down marginally. This company does do a fair amount of stock-based comp, and so that sort of offsets the buyback. From a balance sheet, this company still looks phenomenal. Not Nothing to really worry about, at least for now, sitting on roughly $300 million worth of cash and cash equivalents, another $1.4 billion of marketable securities. And so that brings your total, total current assets roughly to $2.4 billion last year 
grew closer to 2.2 billion from a liabilities perspective not a whole lot sitting on just 530 million dollars of liabilities and so that current ratio is right around five times and so from a balance sheet perspective this company is in a great spot it's really not in any place to sort of go bankrupt or have any liquidity issues but you have to keep in mind this company is expected to post another basically full year of extremely tough growth both on that revenue and earning side and so as you see inventories year over year ticking up pretty substantially up from 150 million now up to 213 million you can expect this inventory number to sort of tick up throughout the year and this balance sheet will not maybe look as good as it is now in a year from now and so keep that in mind they did wipe out their current portion of debt roughly 90 million dollars so right now the balance sheet looking pretty standard and good over at Enphase, but keep in mind it will deteriorate a bit over the next one year because of this net income figure coming in at just 20.9 million dollars again last year you were closer to 150 million dollars of net income when times are booming so is Enphase. when interest rates are low and the consumer can look to spend on high ticket items yeah the financials over at Enphase will frankly look stellar but again when times are hard and the consumer can't spend on their solar panels yeah, a company like Enphase will absolutely feel that in a pretty significant way. This is an extremely cyclical stock and right now is going through a pretty tough time in its business. We get to net cash provided by operating activities of $35 million. Keep in mind, this company added close to $55 million of stock-based compensation back on this net income figure. And so when you see net income of just $20 million, and then on top of that, get to add back roughly $55 million of stock-based compensation. You have to question whether executives over at Enphase are getting paid just a little bit too much. Now we also get to add roughly $76 million of net cash provided by investing activities. And so that brings our total cash flows from both operating and investing activities right around, we'll call it $110 million. And Enphase used roughly or almost exactly $100 million on the repurchase of their common stock. We see a quarter ago, that repurchase was at roughly $110 million. So this company is looking to buy back its shares as they have declined, and they are really executing on that. Moving on to the technical, shares of Enphase have really struggled over the past one year as they've been in a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. And really, as we walk through today's result, a pattern like this should come to no surprise. Now, this stock did bottom out roughly close to $75 a share back in November. Since then, has seen a pretty nice rally of roughly, call it 50%, now up to $112 in the after hours. I do expect this one can come up here close to $125, $120 a share, and then could meet a level of resistance at the upper end of this channel. And then from there, can continue to head lower in a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. Really, you want to see this one come in here higher than $137 a share. That was your previous set of highs if Enphase posts a candle above that. And really, it would take some time, won't happen tomorrow. But if Enphase can come up here higher than $137, make a retest to the top end of this channel, and then from there, make another move higher, then this one can maybe confirm that the downtrend at Enphase is over. But until then, I wouldn't be convinced that the downtrend in Enphase is over and that this one can continue to head lower. The fact that they just revised guidance lower and really missed estimates on Wall Street really is not comforting for me. The fact that this company is so dependent on interest rates and if the Fed just decides to keep interest rates higher for longer, Enphase's business will continue to be in a tough spot for a foreseeable future. And so really this one, seeing a recovery in the short term, but I wouldn't be convinced that the worst for Enphase is over a very cyclical business. And so this one certainly is not in a position where they'll never recover from this. In fact, there will be a day where Enphase once again sees their business boom. But I think with that day being right around two to four quarters away, I think it's still a bit too early to step into shares of Enphase for my liking. That was my take on Enphase Energy, a stock I'm not really convinced that it's worth stepping into and buying right now just on the sheer fact that they revised their Q1 guidance on that revenue to come in far lower than estimates on Wall Street and the fact that this business will really continue to be in a tough spot while interest rates remain high. And even as interest rates come down, it will still take a while for Enphase to really reflect that on their financials and feel that throughout their business model. Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Are you coming here and picking up shares of Enphase at $112? Do you think the worst for Enphase is now behind them? 
Let me know your thoughts. As always, thanks so much for listening, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.